God for some answered prayers. And though they believed with all of their hearts, those promises did not manifest. Those blessings did not come to pass. Those situations did not work out the way that they thought that it should have. And 11 months have now passed. And it seems as if time has passed them by. The hand that you hold may be looking forward to great anticipation <clears throat> to this next year. Believe in God that though it didn't happen this year, there is a fresh opportunity, a fresh time, a fresh year for it to manifest. Maybe it's not your situation, but maybe it's the person who's hand you hold. So I came to encourage that person today that I know you have not seen it in 11 months and you're looking forward to next year I came to tell you don't move so fast don't be in such a hurry to get to next year because there's still time on the clock who needs to hear that today but I know it has not happened this year yet but there's still 21 more days in this year for God to work everything out that you need there's still time on this clock and a God who needed only six days to create a world Needs only a fraction of that time to change everything in your situation. So if I were you, I wouldn't give up just yet. I wouldn't throw it in just yet. I wouldn't move on just yet. But even on this day, if I were you, I would still believe the God you serve can still make a way, even in 2019. So God, for the hand that I hold, I say thank you. For the storms you brought them over, the valleys you brought them through, the mountains they've come over and out of, the path that they've yet traveled, God, I say thank you. And God, for the blessings you have yet to manifest in their lives, for the promises you yet have stored up for them, God. We say thank you. So God, my prayer is not for me today, but my prayer is for my neighbor. That whatever my neighbor walked in with today, whatever my neighbor still needs to work in their life, however my neighbor still needs for you to show up, God, I pray that you move on their behalf. I squeeze my neighbor's hand just to let them know there's still time that you're still on the way, that change is still coming, that better is still on the way. God, I join my faith with them to let them know it's gonna get better. Matter of fact, it's gonna get better because they set by me today. Things are gonna change because they set on my rope. Because I've got enough faith on the inside of me to change everything that's going on around me. So I command this atmosphere right now. We charge this atmosphere right now with praise. And God, we declare we still believe doors are opening right now. Paths are clearing right now. Ways are being made right now. God, we declare it's gonna happen. Stand up in your preacher. Help me to preach your word with your power. Give me clarity of thought and voice to declare your word. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. And Lord, let my soul look up with a steadfast hope. 
Now will be lost to now, and it is in your matchless, majestic son of Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hug somebody and tell them there's still time. Hallelujah. 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 My God, I feel that. I said there's still time. attention today. When you have it, say, I got it. I got it. You don't have it, say, hold up, Richard. All right. Read this way. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who had lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. And she stood behind him at his feet weeping. She began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair and kissed them and poured perfume on them. The Pharisee who invited him saw this. He said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman that she is that she is a sinner. That's enough. As God shall guide and hopefully you should help, I'd like to preach from the subject, Worship Changed My Story. As you go to your seat, tell your neighbor, neighbor, sin got me in it, but worship is going to get me out. Amen. You may have your seat. Worship changed my story. Grass withereth, the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. If you were reading the Bible in order from Genesis to Revelation, you would come to discover that you would have encountered this woman's story three times without ever knowing her name. 
Though it is obvious that each of the three writers of the Gospels find some value in her story, we are never afforded the privilege of a proper introduction. The absence of a name is not uncommon in scripture. Many accounts of the works of Jesus began with a certain man or a certain woman. And understanding the rapid pace of Jesus' ministry during that day, and the many people he encountered, one could easily accept that a name tied to an unfamiliar place might get lost along the way. Conventional wisdom reasons that the absence of a name in scripture allows us a better connection with the text. Yeah. And it's the notion that because there are common factors that we all share, we can all find our space in the biblical story. Yeah. Yeah. Who here at some point in your life has felt just like the man who sat by the gate called beautiful, discouraged by his challenges and seeking change? Or like the woman who had dealt with a blood issue for so long that she doubted if change was even possible. These feelings resonate with us regardless of character identification and bring us face to face with our humanity. And I can accept this explanation from Matthew and even from Mark. But when Luke omitted her name, he replaced it with a title and changed the very nature of the story. And isn't it funny how people, especially those in the church, have a way of always telling your story? Yeah, they don't know your name, but they're always familiar with your sin. They can't tell you where you worship, but they know exactly where you drink. They don't know who you pray with, but they can name everybody you ever slept with. They don't have a clue where you're going, but they can write a book on where you've been. And I can admit that I too have been guilty of spinning a few narratives and being caught up in some colorful commentary, and I might have even fallen for it here in the text if Luke did it. Had he just stopped there, but when he told me what she was, he also told me where she was going. And when I found out where she was headed, I had to stop reading and start shouting. Because the text says that she was a sinner, but it also says that she was on her way to Jesus. And y'all, that did it for me. She's a sinner. She knows how to sin, but she also knows how to get to Jesus. She doesn't always get it right, but she knows how to get in his presence. That's a good place for me to get real excited because even with my sinful, jacked up self, I can still get to Jesus. I know I don't deserve it. I know I haven't earned it. I know I don't always appreciate it like I should, but he still lets me in his presence. And I've come to the conclusion that I don't mind you telling my story just as long as you don't leave out the fact that I made it to Jesus. Yeah, don't forget to add that. I know I've been a lot of places that I shouldn't have been and done a lot of things that I shouldn't have done. But please let somebody know that I made it to Jesus. Because out of everything I got wrong, I managed to get one thing right. And when the sentences of my life were headed in the wrong direction, I put my narrative in the hands of the master editor, and he changed the very nature of my story. And the only reason that my dark and stormy night turned into happily ever after is because on my way to hell, I had sense enough to turn around and get to Jesus. So when you see some of us shouting in church, it ain't always because we're proud of the journey. But we're celebrating the fact that in spite of everything we've been through, we still made it to Jesus. With all the mistakes we made, we made it to Jesus. All the sins we committed, we made it to Jesus. All the lies we told, we got to Jesus. All the people that we hurt, we still made it to Jesus. And the reason we praise him like we do, the reason we can't sit still and worship, and the reason we get happy before church even gets started, it's because we know where we've been. And when the Lord should have pushed us away, he let us get closer to him. And the only reason we're sitting in church clothed and out right now is because we made it to Jesus. And since I'm here, since I've made it this far, and I've gotten this close, I'm not going to waste this moment. But I'll enter his gates with thanksgiving. I'll enter his courts with praise. I'll be thankful unto him, and I'll bless his name. Why are you going to do it, Curtis? Because in spite of everything that I've been through, I still made it to Jesus. I know it's early in the sermon, but is there anybody here who can celebrate the fact that you made it to Jesus? If you knew where I've been, if you knew what I've done, if you knew how I've blown it, if you knew my story, you praise God for me. But the reason I come in here and can't sit down and can't sit stoic and can't sit quiet and always got my hand up and always jumping up and down is because I made it to the Lord and I just did because I made it to Jesus. Is there anybody here who's just glad that you're saved? 
or the job I want to work at, but every once in a while I can just shout because I'm saved. And if they're glad about it, give God praise. I made it. I made it. I made it. I made it. You don't know what it took for me to get here. You don't know how I had to fight the devil just to get here. I can give God praise. If you don't promise me nothing, just because I made it to Jesus. It's important here to know that this woman has not been invited to this gathering. When you read down around the 39th verse, you realize that she went left off the guest list by accident. Simon does not want her here. And I'm not going to lie, I don't like uninvited guests myself. You show up in my house and don't call, you're going to stay on the outside of that door. So I can understand Simon's frustration at her being there. This is his house. He should be entitled to determine who comes and goes. The only problem is that when he made the guest list, he invited Jesus. And when you extend an invitation to Jesus to reside in your house, you immediately lose property rights. Because when Jesus shows up, transformation is always possible. And is there anybody here who can testify that everything started changing when the sun showed up in your house? Please allow me to pause here for just a moment and submit to you today that that might be the very reason why you're catching so much hell in this season. Yeah, the reason the enemy is so heavy on you in this season might just be because you're shining too bright. And he knows that wherever light shines, change is possible. Yeah, hear me, it's not that God is punishing you. It's just that you're bringing too much positive energy into too many negative situations. And things are changing just because you're shining. And it's not because you got it going on, everything is perfect. But it's because the Lord of heaven is shining through you. And sometimes, if we're honest, it ain't even because you want to. It's just your mandate. Matthew 5, 16 says it this way. Let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So I'm not shining because I need you to like me. I'm doing it so you'll see my God. Because if you get to know him like I know him, you won't need my light because you'll start shining all by yourself. Yeah, if you ever get a glimpse of how good God's been to me, how he showed up and showed out in ways I never thought he could, and added illumination to the dark places that have plagued my existence, you'll beat me praising God. Because when Jesus shines, I mean when the S-O-N starts shining in your life, situations start looking brighter and circumstances clearer and your days start shining brighter and storm clouds can stay because the light has shown up and because he showed up, because the master stepped in and started shining, my praise becomes dazzling and my worship more vivid because my life has never been the same. And I believe that's somebody's testimony here today. My life is better because Jesus is in my house. Yeah, things ain't perfect, everything ain't sunny, but it's better because the Lord's in my house. And I decided that I'd rather have a few dark days with him in the house than have sunshine without him. Because I've discovered that he still has a way of shining even on a dark day. And whatever I have to go through is worth it just as long as he's in my house. So sometimes my prayer ain't about blessings, increase, and overflow. But sometimes I just pray, Lord, whatever you do, don't leave my house. And whatever, don't take your Holy Spirit away. For me, because if I have your Holy Ghost, I can make it through whatever life throws in my way. And the sun is now shining in Simon's house. The light of Christ's glory has drawn him to this unnamed woman. Hear me, she is not invited. Simon does not want her here. And none of that matters because Jesus is in the house. And though she does not, Lady G, come with an invitation, she does come with something. She comes with worship. And worship is always appropriate when Jesus is in the house. You didn't invite me, that's all right. Worship is my invitation. You don't say I'm qualified, that's all right. Don't worry about it. My worship qualifies me. You don't think I deserve to be here? That's okay because my worship does. You don't think I'm worthy? My worship says otherwise. You don't approve of me? That's all right because 
my worship is not contingent upon your approval. If you didn't want me in the house, you should have kept Jesus out the house. Because I've got a right, I feel like preaching today, to be wherever Jesus is. And it's with this mentality, I wish you could see it today, that this woman breaks every social movement and makes her way to Jesus. She does not come, but she comes with a purpose. She's on a mission. She knows exactly what she came to do. The only problem is that at this particular moment, nobody has any interest in doing what she came to do. Because Jesus is in the house, but ain't nobody worshiping. What do you do when you come in the house and nobody's made worship a priority? What do you do when your worship has the propensity to mess up the atmosphere of the house? How do you respond when your worship has the potential to disrupt the culture of everything that's going on around you? Well, she's left with a couple choices. She can leave and come back at a different time when worship's going on. But if she does that, Jesus might not be in the house the next time she comes. And she doesn't want to miss the moment. Well, she can join the festivities and do what everybody else is doing. But you see, she didn't come to eat. She didn't come to drink. She didn't come to fellowship. She came to worship. Well, she can try to wait it out and see if the atmosphere changes at some point. But you see, she's worked too hard to get here. And what she brought with her is far too valuable to waste time. So this woman decides to do what she came to do. And even in spite of the atmosphere around her, she decides to give God her best worship. And I wonder if that's anybody's testimony here today. I came to worship. I didn't come to be seen. I didn't come to be nosy. I didn't come for a whole lot of foolishness. I came to worship. I'm not here today because I couldn't find nothing else to do. I'm not here to talk about my week. I didn't come to take no selfies. I came to get in the Lord's presence. And matter of fact, if you knew what kind of week it's been, and if you knew how bad I needed them, and if you knew what it took for me to get here this moment, you tear this place up just for me. And I don't need a whole lot of help to get it started when I think of the goodness of Jesus. And all he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah, I came. Matter of fact, I woke up this morning with my mind staying on, is there anybody here who said I didn't come for a whole lot, but the one thing I did come to do was worship the Lord. Are there any worshipers in the house who said I didn't come for all this foolishness, but I just came because the God I serve is worthy of my worship. Linda, if you knew what she walked in with, you would clearly understand her decision. And that would ask the job is not easy to come by. Matter of fact, there's only one place in Egypt that alabaster is mined from. And creating an alabaster box is not an easy thing. Alabaster is broken and snatched from a rocky place. Then it's drilled and cut to produce a shape. An alabaster jar is reshaped and then empty so that it can be prepared to carry oil. And that's somebody's testimony here today. That the oil of my life is too valuable for me not to give God my best. Yeah, you see the anointing on my life, but you don't know the process and how the Lord has had to work on me. You don't know the dark places I've had to come out and how he's had to shape me and make me and mold me. And you jealous of me and you don't even know what it took for me to get here. Matter of fact, you couldn't even put up with what I had to put up with to get this. You round here hating on me and you don't know how many nights I cried and how many nights I screamed and how many nights I said, Lord, what's going on? How many times I had to fight the devil? You round here, why they do all of that? Why they do all of this? Why they made all this? Shut up! You don't know like I know what it took for me to get what I got. you better be careful always wanting something. Don't ask me 
their breakthrough if you ain't ready for their been through. You around here want a BMW, you better look at that maintenance. You better thank God for your Toyota. Them $45 oil changes. You don't know the cost of what it takes. I'm just trying to free somebody. It gets you to point A to point B. You better thank God for it. I just saved somebody a Christmas payment right now. You better be careful. If you got a problem with me now, you should have seen me when the Lord started working on me. You need to thank God I've come as far as I've come. But I tell you what, when he gets finished, shaping me and making me and molding me and filling me, I shall come forth like pure God. And I don't know who this is for today, but I came to tell you, you better stick with the process. I know it's hard, I know it's rough, I know it's dark, but you better stay with it because God is going to do something through your process. That's going to make you better than it ever was before. That sometimes the heat of our process it's refining us and making us better so that we can prepare for our next place in God. Don't hate your process because your process is the indicator that God's got something working on your behalf. And Mary comes, this unnamed woman, she comes, she kneels down at his feet. She breaks the box. She releases his contents. And now both oil and tears meet at the feet of Jesus. Simon has not had him as much of this as he could stand. It's bad enough that she's not been invited. And that she's monopolized his guest list. But now she's disrupted the entire atmosphere of the house. And to make matters worse, she's a sinner. She doesn't deserve to be here. And if he was who he says he was, and he knew what kind of woman that she was. He would throw her out and wouldn't even acknowledge her. And though he does not speak one word, his indignation has pierced the very heart of Jesus. And it's at this moment that he makes his biggest mistake. Now the guest of the house has to set the house in order. Since you want to make something that has nothing to do with you about you, let me come down your street. He says, Simon, let me ask you a question. Two people owed money to a creditor. One person owed $500. And the other person owed $50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. But he forgave both debts. Which one of them will you think love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one who had the biggest debt forgiven. Jesus said, you judged correctly. He tells Simon to look at her. He says, when I came in your house, you didn't give me any water for my feet. But she's washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. He says, you didn't greet me with a kiss. But this woman has not stopped kissing my feet. He says, you didn't put oil on my head. But she's poured perfume on my feet. He says, therefore, I tell you, her sins, though they were many, have been forgiven. And that's really my shout for today. Sin gave her a reputation, but worship gave her a legacy. Sin kept her from him, but worship brought her to him. Sin ran up the tab, but worship paid the bill. Sin condemned her, but worship redeemed her. Sin said judgment, but worship said grace, which means that an unexpected guest gave unexpected worship and walked out with an unexpected miracle. So you can judge my worship, but you don't know how much I owe him. But all you need to know is that it cost me something. And if you knew what it took for me to get this worship, you wouldn't hinder me, but you would help me. So you might not think it takes all of that, but you don't know what it takes for me. You don't know how I lay awake at night. You don't know the nights that I cry. You don't know the mistakes that I make. You don't know 
some other bad decisions that are coming. You don't know how I fought the enemy. You don't even know how I had to fight myself. So it might not mean much to you, but it's all I got. So you can talk about my worship. You can judge my worship. You can do whatever you need to do. But when I get in his presence, worship is still going down. If the choir don't sing, I'm still going to worship. If the deacons don't pray, I'm still going to worship. If the ushers don't greet me, I'm still going to worship. If bishop don't preach, I'm still going to worship. Because I came to worship. So when you see me lifting my hands, when you see me rocking from side to side, when you see tears streaming down my face, when you hear me crying out in worship, when you see me walking the floor, when you see me jumping up and down, just know I'm doing what I came to do. Good afternoon, Dr. Duffer. May the Lord God bless you real good. But I'm there are two folk in the building who can help me close this sermon and lift your hands and give God praise. Open your mouth. Give God praise. Why don't you help me preach today? Why don't you grab a neighbor by the hand? and say, neighbor, sin got me in it, but worship got me out of it. That was the wrong neighbor. Find you another neighbor. Grab that neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I don't know what you came to do, but I came to worship. That was still the wrong neighbor. Find you just one more neighbor. Take that neighbor by the hand. This time, shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them. Shake them and rock them. And say, neighbor, I came to worship God. But if you came to worship, give God praise. Give him glory. He's working it out. Give him honor. He's working it out. Have you any rivers that seem uncrossable? You in the mountains that you cannot tell the group. God specializes. I said God specializes. I said God specializes in things that are impossible. And he will do. I said he will do. I said he will do what no other power can do. So be not dismayed. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Whatever, 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 whatever be time, God will. I said God will. I said God will. I said God will. I said he will. Anybody here know that God will take care of you. If you believe it, let everything, let everything, let everything. Let every effort, every effort, everything that has breath, give God praise.
He wants to open up doors in this moment. I wish you'd press in.
more time. I'm going to give somebody one more minute. This is your moment. This is your time. If you know that there are steps you need to take, get to this also right now. Your life is worth it. I'm waiting on you. Your life is worth it. Your life is worth it. Give you one more chance. Get to this also. I see you, my sister.
them to walk in your path. God, I pray that you show them the way that they should go. I pray that you stand with them and you hold them up even when it gets hardest. God, I thank you for their lives. I thank you for who they are and I thank you for all that you placed on the inside of them. And God, I decree right now open doors and clear paths and ways being made. I pray for blessings and healing and breakthrough even right now. God, I pray that you honor their efforts. That you honor their decision. That you give them everything that they need. God, I, think, I pray that you send them people on this journey to walk with them and to encourage them. And brothers and sisters to undergird them along the way. God, I declare that their best days are ahead of them. I decree and declare that better is their portion. God, I thank you because you're moving right now that even when they took their first steps, you took some steps towards them. So God, I pray that even as they go back to their seat, it's better. That as they're walking back to their seat, it's getting better. That things are changing and it's moving right now by your spirit. The blood of Jesus prevailed. The blood of Jesus prevailed. Say that you have no victory in this. That God gets the victory in this. The devil is defeated. The enemy is defeated. It's getting better right now. God, for those who have yet not taken steps or who took steps in faith but did not take physical steps. I pray that you move on their behalf even right now. God, I, I feel you moving right now. I feel you moving right now. I feel you moving right now. Yes, sir. Yes, God. Yes, God. So God, we leave this altar encouraged. We leave this altar better. God, we believe you and we leave this altar believing for your best. So God, bless us and we will be blessed. Keep us and we will be kept. Hold us and we shall be held. Now this is the matchless majestic Martha's name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Hug somebody as you go back and tell them it's already about. As you go back to your seat, tell them it's already about. Lead me, guide me. Y'all come help me sing. Sing your anointing. Father, I pray. Order my steps. One more time. Order my steps as a prayer. Order my steps. Order my steps. Come on, y'all. Help me sing. Sing with me. Lead me, God. Me. Sing your anointing, Father. I pray. Yes, sir. That's it. Father, I pray.
let's stay settled and let's receive our mouth up the connection at this time. 